this is McD the Beast, and this is McD Sports 4 coming to you today with my NBA Eastern Conference predictions. I'm just going to give the records 1 through 15 um, playoffs. If you want to see my playoff predictions for the Eastern Conference, once I have the seeds lined up, that will be on Wednesday, um, that video, along with the Western Conference um, playoff uh, predictions. My Western Conference predictions are going to be tomorrow. And my award predictions are going to be Thursday. So a four-day um, NBA prediction um, show or whatever you want to call it. Um, the Eastern Conference this year um, is pretty weak in my opinion. I think there's six teams, obviously, that are going to make the playoffs. And then from there, you would think one of them would. And then I think that eighth spot is wide open for anybody to take outside of, of a few teams. And I'll, I'll mention if... if um, which teams have a shot at making the playoffs and not. So, without further to do, let's dive into my NBA Eastern Conference predictions. And the way it's going to work is on the top left-hand corner, it's going to be the C um, in the standings, 1 through 15. So, let's say, for example, the Knicks on number 1, um, which I don't have, by the way. So, it would be Knicks 1, and let's say they went, I have them going, I don't know, 58 and 24 on the bottom left hand corner. I'll have the record. I have them going so 58 24 up one seed Knicks. So let's start Let's um, dive into this and let's we'll see um, what you guys think Comment down below Tell me what you think about my NBA predictions The number one seed I have the Boston Celtics going 60 and 22 I think they were the best team in the East and I don't even, and I don't even think it's close um, You look at the starting line of Kyrie Irving um, I think they're going to go Kyrie Irving, Marcus Smart, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum, Al Horford. They have Aaron Baines, um, Thesis, Terry Rozier, um, Jalen Brown. They had they are very good. The the um, Boston Celtics. They are ten deep. I believe in their head coach, um, Brad Stevens. I just think the Celtics are the best team in the East. And it's not and it's not even close. I think. They'll get the first seed. I think they'll they'll win sixty games as they go sixty and twenty two. For the second seed in the East, I have the Toronto Raptors going fifty five and twenty seven. You gotta think um, a culture change was made um, with Nick Nurse um, coming in as head coach. Even though I don't believe in Nick Nurse, um, I didn't even know who the hell he was until he got hired. Um, but you gotta think Kawhi Leonard and Kyrie Kyle Lowry for a whole um, season being healthy. Along with Serge Ibaka, Greg Monroe, Jonas Valanciunas, um, Norman Powell, Danny Green, uh, Fred Van Leet, and a few other good role players. Um, just to, uh, yeah, a few other good role players. The Toronto Raptors should be the second seed in the East. I have them going 55 and 27. I think Kawhi Leonard is the best player in the Eastern Conference. So I think they have the best player in the Eastern Conference in Kawhi Leonard. Um, I think they're gonna go. Um, I think they'll go um, get the second seed in the East, and I think they'll at least make it to the second round. The number three seed in the East is the Indiana Pacers. I have them going fifty and thirty-two. The Pacers are really freaking good people. Nick McMillan is an underrated head coach. I look at the Pacers: Miles Turner, Victor Oladipo. You bring in um, Tyreek Evans. You still have. Um, Darren Collison. You don't have Lance Stevenson, but to replace that, um, you bring in Kyle Q. Quinn. Um, this Pacers team is basically the same as last year. Very underrated. They're gonna fly under the radar again this year, um, and they're gonna turn some heads. I have them going 15 32. I think they are the third best team in the NBA. The Indiana Pacers. For the number four seed, I have the Washington Wizards. I am a Washington Wizards fan, by the way, just to let you know. I have us going 47 and 35. I think this is the deepest team that the Wizards have had in a while. You look at the starting five, John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter Jr., Markeith Morris, and um, Dwight Howard. So those five, um, you have... Austin Rivers, Thomas Starchonski, or whatever the hell his name is. You have um, Kelly Oubre. Um, you have Ian Mahimi. 
I mean, you have a pretty deep team here. Um, if you're the Washington Wizards, um, it's a pretty deep team. It, they go too deep in every position, I believe. They're pretty good, the Washington Wizards. So that's why I have them going as the four seed. I think they're going to fly under under the radar and go forty seven and thirty five. For the fifth seed, I have the Milwaukee Bucks. I have them going forty four and thirty eight. Um, their team is Giannis or Bus. Um, in my opinion, on the mindset of this, I don't. I believe in Chris Middleton, but I don't think he can lead a team to the playoffs with him being the best player. Eric Bledsoe, to me, him and Giannis is friction right there. They, I, there's reports that Giannis wants Eric Bledsoe gone. Um, the um, Milwaukee Bucks could look on from moving on from Eric Bledsoe in the training deadline. Um, I look at also this team, Jari Parker left. Um, now it's Brook Lopez as center. You go, I think, Thon Maker. I think, he, I think the starting five is going to be Bledsoe, Brogdon, Milton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. You did get um, Brooke Lopez to replace Monroe. Um, which I don't like because that's less rebounding. My opinion about the Milwaukee Bucks is just that you know, I think they're a bit overrated. I think people, I know they got the good head coach and um, Mike Boone Holzer, but. I, I just think they're overrated. I just think the Bucks are overrated, and I think I'm going to be right about this at the end of the season. Number six, I have the Philadelphia 76ers. They're the most overrated team this year, in my opinion, going into the season. Um, Joe Embiid's not a top 10 player. Ben Simmons is overrated at this time. Um, that could change. I've been going 42 and 40. I just think the 76ers are overrated. Um, and also, I have a question to. They have a lot of um, Fords on the team, and Wilson Chandler added to the team. They have, um, they ha they have um, Justin Anderson. They have a lot of Fords on this team. Um, Robert K um, Covington, Co <laughs> Robert Covington. They just have a lot of Fords on this team, and I don't know where the playing time's gonna be. Um, Markel Folks is a question on this team. Is he a bus? I mean. I, I hope to say no, but you never know. Um, but I'm just saying, the 76ers, I think, have more question marks, especially with the front office. I know I think they did hire GM, but they had that whole thing with, like, the fake um, Twitter accounts or stuff like that. I don't know. But, I mean, there's a lot of question marks around the 76ers. And I, I just feel like this year is going to be a, a little bit of a down year for them at 42 and 40 as the 60. But I still have them making the playoffs. Now as the seventh seed, these are the two team spots that I think um, teams are going to be competing for. Um, starting with the Detroit Pistons, as I have them grabbing that seventh seed at thirty nine and forty three. And the reason why I have the Pistons grabbing the seventh seed is because of one reason, one reason only: Blake Griffin, DeAndre. I mean, excuse me, Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, Reggie Jackson should be good enough, especially coached by Dwayne Casey. That should be good enough to make the playoffs if you're the De if you're the Detroit uh, Pistons. Uh, I'm not sold on this bench. I don't. I'm not really sold on the bench, but I do think that, personally speaking, the Pistons with those three players alone, and their head coach. I think um, the head coach, um, Dwayne Casey. I think he's gonna find players on this bench that are gonna step up some. I'm going to say if Detroit makes a push and they get the 7th seed. For the 8th seed, this is a bold prediction now. I have the, the Chicago Bulls making the playoffs as the 8th seed at, at uh, 38 and 44. I just think that the Bulls are very underrated. I look at this team, Chris Dunn, Jari Parker. You got, um, who else do you have on this team? You have the, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., from the draft, you also have Robin Lopez still, um, Zach Levine, um, the small forward position is a little weak, you have Aaron Holiday, this team is pretty young and they're ready to um, play and compete, I think they're making the playoffs 38 and 44, um, I'm not sold on their head coach Fred Horberg, but I, I, I just have a gut feeling that the Bulls are making the playoffs at 38 and 44. So now this is the cutoff. Now these teams are going to mention next are not making the playoffs. Um, 
I'll, I'll tell you if they, if they have a chance of making the playoffs. This first team I'm going to bring up obviously has a chance of making the playoffs. That's the the uh, Miami Heat at 36 and 46. And a lot of people have the Heat getting that eighth seed. I don't see it happening. I think there's a lot of friction between Hassan Whiteside and the Miami Heat front office. They do have Dwayne Wade on a, on a farewell tour. So, um, I just don't think whenever a farewell tour happens, I just don't usually pick that team to make the playoffs. Um, that's just a war of mine. I, I hope Dwayne Wade stays healthy for all 82 games because I hope he plays all 82 games. Um, even if it's 10, 15 minutes a night. But anyways, I think there's a lot of friction between Hassan Whiteside and, and Miami's front office, Pat Ryrie and that group. Um, I give the Heat, I, I do give the Heat a, a legit shot making the playoffs. I think they, I, I, it would not surprise me at all if this team makes the playoffs. I just don't see it. Um, Goran Dragic is also in a lot of trade rumors, which I don't like. They kind of had that trade with Jimmy Butler um, fell apart. Apart, um, they, it looked like they were going to get him, and then they didn't. So that was kind of um, turning me off. So I had the Heat miss it, barely missing the playoffs by two games. Um, they can still make it, though, but I just don't have them making the playoffs this year. The number 10 seed, the Brooklyn Nets. Um, Brooklyn is going to... The Nets are gonna um they're gonna sneak up on some teams this year, the the um, Brooklyn Nets. I look at this team, D'Angelo D'Angelo Russell, um Chris LeVert, um Jared Allen, as um Wande Harlan's Jefferson with Kenneth Reed. That's probably a starting five. You to have Sean Kilpatrick and a few other okay bench players. The Brooklyn Nets, they um they're gonna sneak up on some teams this year, the Brooklyn Nets. I don't know, um I don't think they'll make the playoffs. I, I give them a shot, though. I do give the the Brooklyn Nets a shot at making the playoffs. They have an excellent head coach in Kenny Atkinson. But I, I just don't know. The good news about the Nets is that they'll get their draft picks back um, starting this year. Number 11, the Charlotte Hornets, um, 34 and 48. Um, you might think this might be a little bit low for the Hornets. That's because I think they'll train Kemba Walker at some point this year. Um, and that's really their team, Kemba Walker, um, Jeremy Lamb's okay, Malik Monk, Monk, um, kind of turned it on last year, maybe if he continues, maybe they'll make a playoff push in Charlotte, um, no Dwight Howard, no more, you have, I think, Frank Kaminsky, um, as your center, or Cody Zeller, Zeller one is two, um, you have Marvin Williams, um, Michael K. Gilchrist, um, two, um, dra low-key draft busts right there. Um, Nicholas Batum, um, let's see what he does, but I think, um, I, I, I just think that, the, oh yeah, you also have Tony Parker, and that's a pretty good signing, um, Hornets for Tony Parker, but anyways, what I was trying, the point I'm trying to get to is that when the Hornets trade Kemba Walker and don't get much back from him, um, it's just going to be a lot of L's for the Hornets. I give them a shot at making the playoffs, though. And then the last team I give a shot at making the playoffs is the Cleveland, Caval Cleveland Cavaliers at 31 and 51. Um, Kevin Lovell busts is his team. Um, their second best player is probably George Hill at this point. J.R. Smith. Um, your, I don't even know who the hell. I think Jeff Green is, is your replacement um, for small forward. I, I don't even know, but... Yeah, you have Tristan Thompson who's saying up there saying this team's making the Eastern Conference Finals. I want to know what the hell he's smoking because that's a ludicrous statement right there. But I just think the Cavs, I, I just think it's going to be a down year in Cleveland. Um, they, ha they had a shot at Kawhi. They had a shot at Paul George. They couldn't sign either one of them. They had a shot at Jimmy Butler too. Couldn't trade for him. I just think that the Cavs, I, I, I just think it's going to be Kevin Love or Buss. Um, Kevin Love's going to be an all-star this year, but outside of that, I, I just don't see much with the Cavs. I think Tyron Lue, I don't, I'm not sold on Tyron, Tyron Lue as a head coach. If they make the playoffs this year, I'll be sold on him, but I don't see them making the playoffs. And then these last three teams, I don't see making the playoffs. The Orlando Magic is the first one. I have them as the 13th seed at 29-53. and 53. Um, I give them like a 5% shot, actually, now thinking about it. Um, especially with Steve Clifford as the head coach. So maybe the Magic will, but I don't care. I don't see them making it. I highly doubt that they will. The Magic is just a losing culture in Orlando, and it has to be fixed. 
I, I think sh I think they should just blow it up. Trade um Nikola Vucic, trade Aaron Gordon, trade them all away. I'm shocked they re-signed Aaron Gordon. I just think they should have blown it up, let him walk, but they didn't. Um, I just think that the Magic are um, I I I just think it's a losing culture there, sort of like the Phoenix Suns. Hopefully the Suns know what they're doing because they did draft DeAndre Ayton, but and but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, I just think that the Orlando Magic, personally, I, I just think it's a losing culture, and until it gets changed, I'm, I refuse to pick the Magic to make the playoffs. And then the last two teams, teams that I definitely don't think are making the playoffs, first one being the Atlanta Hawks as the fourth team seed, 22 and 60. Um, Trey Young's going to shoot the ball. He's going to make some shots. Outside of that, they're not, Atlanta's not going to be anything to watch. Um no more Dennis Schroeder. Um, I mean, their best player might be Trey Young uh, or Kent Bazemore. I, I just don't know. Like the, the Hawks, I think they're making the right move rebuilding, but I mean, they really it, it, it is. They do not have a lot of young talent on that Hawks team. Um, John Collins, he's a big. Um, he's probably the best player right now. John Collins. Um, he was pretty impressive um, last year in his rookie year. And then the last seed, the New York Knicks, I have them as the 15th seed, going 18 and 64. Kevin Knox, Dave Fisdale, all you have going into the season. You'll get Kristaps Porzingis um, in late January towards the All Star break, most likely. I just think that the Knicks are the worst team in in um, the NBA. I think they're worse than the Kings. I just don't see. Um, I just don't see the Knicks doing anything this year. I don't like this team that much. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. is okay, but outside that, and Kevin Knox, um, Frank Neokila, I need to see more of him. Um, Moutier, he's there. Eh. But Trey Burke, eh. But anyways, I, I just need to see more of this Knicks team. And and I, personally, I just think it's going to be a rough year for New York Knicks fans again. So anyways, those are my NBA predictions. For the 2018-2019 season for the for the uh, Eastern Conference, Com comment down below. Tell me what you think about the Eastern Conference, and tell me your predictions. I'm interested to hear. I will comment back if I think there's something that should be said by me. Um, also, tell me what you think about my predictions. Do you think I'm overrating a team or maybe underrating a team? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, please subscribe and like. That would be greatly appreciated. And thanks for watching the video. And this is McGee the Beast. Signing off.